Yo guys, what is up? This is Scammers from Docs coming back to you again with another video. Uh, today we're going to be covering an extension. I pronounce it Jashaku. Uh, I probably get that wrong, so please don't come at me. But basically, it's a debug and utility extension for your bots. So no coding today. Uh, we're just going to be going over this. Some simple ways to use it, and pretty much that's it. We're not going to go into subclassing it or using it as an API. Uh, that's up to you if you want to do something more advanced. This is just going to be a simple tutorial. It's really simple, so we're just going to install it in our terminal. Up install. And then if we jump into here, all we have to do is just do bot.load extension and then just quite literally load it. That's built to be an easy to use package, so that's all we have to do. And now if we just go jump in Discord, we will see that we can go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, have to, I just have to run the bot now. Cool, now that's loaded up. Just took a minute there, I was just dealing with something else. And now if we just go here, we just go prefix, and then we do have to prefix it with this command here, the so jashaku, and then we're just going to go pi, and then let's just go one plus one. And then that'll just tell it what it is and invoke it. And this command pretty much just uh, executes and evaluates any Python code passed into it. Uh, so like simple expressions um, and stuff like that. So if we just went like this, I'm just going to copy this. For future's sake, you can also use JSK, I believe, uh, but we'll test it in a minute. So if we just go await, uh, and let's call ctx.message the author. Got name. Oopsie daisy, I think I have. Ah, I can't send messages. Oops, I think I've just gone ahead and attempted to send something to myself rather than print it out. But yep. Yeah. So pretty much all we're doing here is just calling it here. So if I go ahead and we're just going to try this, JSK Pi and one plus one. Yeah, so that works as well. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. Yeah, JSK, the space, later on. And so it's just a real simple way to evaluate your code. Now you might notice I used an underscore there. That's because quite simply put, the variables are available by default, same as our eval command like CTX bot author and all of that. Have underscores that way um, you know it's going to prevent you from overwriting any other variables um, and stuff if you're trying to invoke decent code such as here cool it's, it's just a really easy way of evaluating stuff it's pretty much what we do with our eval command just like way bigger way better now there's something else cool on this so if we just go JSK and then we're gonna go ahead and go this this actually returns the bytecode. So I should probably put something a bit bigger in there, but I think it's just a cool way for you guys to figure out what your code is actually doing. So if I go JSK, just and then let's let let's put something a bit bigger in there. So we just put in code blocks and then we'll go uh, x equals two, y equals three, um, z return x to the power of y. And so you'll notice that if we expand this, that actually shows all of the bytecodes. So basically what, what the program is actually trying to do. It doesn't execute it, but it basically just goes, okay, we need to load a constant and store it. We need to load another one and store it. We need to load both of these, and then we need to do binary power on it before returning it. And I just think that's something quite cool. And it's come back in the new version, which came out about a week ago uh, in 2.0. So it's really cool doesn't execute the code, but I think it's just a cool way to see what your program is actually doing. Now, there's a couple other functions here that are quite nice. So if we go JSK and then we go shell, I mean, you probably figured out what it's going to do, but if we go shell, and then uh, let's just say uh, I'm a Windows, so I need to remember if I can actually do this. So can I go cat? I cannot. So we're just going to go ahead, and we're just going to go ahead and go shell tree. Oh, that's a shame. It hasn't showed it because well, it's a bit out. But it just executes um, commands basically on your command window. So I need to go figure out a nice command that I can run. Actually, let's just do this. Let's just go JSK shell. And then we're going to go Python attack version. And then it returns Python 3.8.5, which is quite cool. And you can also just do stuff like uh, JSK pip. And then that X is a shortcut to the shell command, so you can save typing a word 
Uh, so it's just basically saving frequently used. So you can do pip or you can do get. It just, it just shaves, you know, frequently used commands. Now there's also a whole cool section on unloading and reloading the bot. So you can do like load, you can do reload, you can do unload. So pretty much our commands for unloading and reloading cogs. Except it's all bundled together uh, into this package, which again, it's quite cool. We can also do something called, oh, RTT. Which is a quite cool way of easily calculating the round trip time for your, your bot to the API. And so it calculates response time samples. So, you know, it's averaging it out. And then it gives you the actual average with plus or minus, And then it just prints it out. It's quite cool. A further thing we can do is we can tell it to shut down and it'll gracefully shut down our bot. Big surprise. And it's shut down. That's a, that's a shame. Help sheet. Don't worry about those. Pretty sure it's just from me uh, being unable to type any shell command. Anyway, we've got some more cool stuff. So if we just go ahead, we go cat, and then let's go uh, dot uh, get ignore. And then that'll just uh, read a file from your file system. And so it'll attempt to put it in here. But uh, so if I just click on that, it's just going to show me this, this file here. Which, not really much in it, but it's just another cool command that you can use. Say, if you've got your bot on your VPS, and you're like chilling, and it's like, oh no, my bot, my bot's broken. Um, it's just like, wow, okay, here's my file. So rather than having to log into the VPS, you can just run this command, and then it's fine. Now there is also a curl command, so what we're just going to do here is I'm going to pull in a URL, so we're just going to go curl, uh, let's give it a URL. And then it just reads the page in. It's not going to read it nicely, but it does page in it. <laughs> 71 pages for the PyPy page. No thanks, I'm, I'm good. Let's go JS click space and then just save that again. But it's quite nice because it uh, shows you doing it, you know. And then we can also just sort of page in it our way through. You can also do a lot of commands such as um, sudo, um, su, which allows you to sort of, I mean, go figure. The sudo is basically just bypassing everything. Um, I have owner, so I can't really show you this uh, too well off the top of my head with something. But say if we do sudo, um, what's a command on that bot? Let's just quickly find a command on our bot. I think uh, us user stats is it. I just need to really quickly find. Trying to find a command that actually takes a user. The stats do it. No. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go warn. What does uh? What does warn require? Warn member. So if I go warn at um, pyro testing, uh, it'll say that it was um <laughs> being warned, and then we go warns at pyro. I'm not sure if it shows him who warned. Um, so it shows it's from me. So then if we just end that, because if you remember from last episode, we've got the customer emojis on that bad boy. Um, <laughs> and then we go JSK, SU, and then we're gonna go at, uh, at Connor. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go, uh, oof, give me a second to figure this one out. Oh, so I've just gone ahead and figured that out. It's actually really simple. So we just go SU and then we do who we want to sudo with. So let's say I want uh, I want Doug. I want Doug to warn Pyro. So we're going to go here. We'll go Doug. And then we're going to go the command that we want to invoke. And then we're just going to go the argument. So we want to warn Pyro. And we want to say uh, bad bot. And it'll say, look, you've been warned. We don't show who's warning them in that. But if we go warns at Pyro. And then if you notice, we click this back button, it should take us to the last one. And you'll notice that it's saying it's been warned by Doug, which is great for us. Because, you know, it gets us out of having to worry about our responsibilities. And now basically you can just do the same thing with N. So if I go, uh, SK, SU, um, sorry, N. Ooh, I need a new channel. Uh, Let's just go, let's just go ahead and take one of my channels. Uh, so we'll just go JSK in, and then we'll just do testing. Why not? Testing, and then we can just go ahead and do uh, warns at pyro, 
my test. You notice it doesn't run it here, but if we hop into testing, and we notice the last one, uh, it's been done in here. Mm, has it been done in here? I think it's taken the other channel. Ah, it's taken the other channel. Sorry, disregard that. But that's that's how it works anyway. Ah, it's gone ahead and it's taken the wrong channel in. Um, and then we can also do things like uh, debug, which executes a command with like an actual like error handler wrapped around it. So you can quickly get feedback on errors. So if I did oh, JSK debug on something that I know will break. Um, Alright, we'll go, we'll go. JSK debug. And then we'll just go uh, warn. Oh yeah, because I did warns. So that did work actually. JSK debug warn. Why have you failed to run? Forbidden. Okay, it's, uh, it's trying to send me messages because the page net session is too long. Um, but just to go back to this one. Yeah, so uh, it's just done it in testing rather than here. Because if we do warns at pyro, uh, it normally does it in here. But I didn't. And yeah. Cool. And you can also do a repeat and it'll just repeat a command. So if we just make JSK and repeat warns at pyro. Let's do it uh, three times. Yeah, cool. So we're about to get rate limited on these emojis for sure. But you see, it just runs the command. It's an easy way to populate data in your database. It's like if you need to say you're, you're doing an economy and you want to get some basic data set up so that, and you don't want to make it by hand, you can just run the command three times. So if you don't have to run it three times, you can uh, just put it in there. There's also a command for, it's called perm trace which allows you to investigate the source of express permissions in a channel. So let's go ahead and let's just go, uh, give it a go, eh? JSK, perm trace. Uh, we'll go in our uh, recording, and then we'll go, uh, look at Octopi. And so that just traces back sort of those perms. So you know, it's a permission calculator for the following permissions in recording, for myself. The most fundamental reason why permission is given but you know there could be other reasons so you know like we've got add reactions admin sort of all of those can't we do so we'll go uh let's go jsk go trace on myself shall we good luck oh look at me go i just used the command and i am i just used the command and i am getting the usage of the command run. Wow, that's sad. Look at that. I don't even have. I don't even have admin. <laughs> that's a shame. But you can see that I've got the channel's directors over right, so I can read the messages because I have the directors wrong. And again, it's just another cool way to debug stuff. So rather than having to go through and figure out, you know, like, oh why, why, why doesn't this work? We can just go in here, run this command, and it's like, wow, that's cool. You know what, I'm going to link you guys something in the description. It's going to be the link for this, and then you just want to go down, read the readme, and it'll sort of tell you everything you can and can't do. Um, as well as, if you want to further expand it, you can go through the documentation. You know, you can see what's in you. You can have a, a look at how to expand it as a cog. If you want to, say, uh, change the commands, uh, change the names of them, or change who can use it, because by default, every command group um, has an owner check applied to it. But you can change who can use those by just changing this check here. And so that's basically the easy way to do it. There's also like task systems. I'm not entirely sure how the task queue works, so I'm not uh, comfortable showing you that. But that's up to you guys to play around if you want to sort of throw them all in here and see what you can't do. There's also quite a few more commands that I haven't touched on, such as like retaining and stuff, which is like persisting um, your variables. Uh, so like every time you're on JSK Pi, the variables have persisted. So rather than like having to save them from a database and read them from a database, you can just persist them there. Shows the source for a command. Oh, I'll show you that one before we before we cap off the episode. Let's just go uh, JSK source help. Yeah, you know, that's quite cool. Like it just shows you the entire help con. Doesn't show you the functions that calls. Uh, but it shows you the help command itself. Anyway, uh, that's been it for this episode. I think it's been quite a cool little episode, less code, more showing off. And uh, there's a few commands in there I definitely like, like the source command, the cat command, and the RTT command. And I think they're going to help you guys out a lot. 
um, both for having fun and for debugging purposes. So, peace out.